Oh, well, hello there, beer nerds. So today I'm finally gonna make my updated video showing you how to make a Bubba box. And we've got six different versions to try from. But just yesterday, I discovered a new way to do it that's gonna make it way easier and way cheaper. So stick around and check this out. Now, I've been working on this Bubba box idea for a long time. Now, the way we used to do it is I had this ball lock post that would go down through the top of the cooler. And then you needed some way to get from here into duo tight fittings. And so you'd have to use stuff like Loctite or a ton of Teflon tape. Anyway, it worked, but it wasn't easy for everyone to do. And it did have the potential of leaking if you bumped it. So forget that. I think I just put a dent in my wall. <laughs> so then I took a look around the warehouse to see what else had ball lock posts on it. And of course I got this double ender one, but then how would you really secure that in the middle of the hole? Cause you got nothing to screw up against. Then I got these ones that go on the end of a, a shank, but then, you know, how do I thread into that? I'd have to have a great big thing there with the shank and a nut. The other thing I tried was this stainless steel pop bottle carbonation cap, but how do you attach it to the cooler? And then I thought about cutting the top off of a plastic bottle, but then you're, you're getting into convoluted things where you're gluing pop bottles to your cooler. I just want to give you my thought process because I know you all think this way too. And the last thing I have in the warehouse for quick disconnects is the plastic pop bottle carbonation caps. But then I had the same problem. I'm thinking, oh, I got to get that screwed on there somehow and I could do the clamp thing. And then as I looked at this, I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> and is anyone there with me yet? That space right there looks like it'll just barely... And that was it. That was it! <laughs> that clipped onto there, didn't move. And it was solid. So check this out with the, I mean, this is a pretty heavy tap with the flow restriction and everything. I mean, that that's pretty solid. Now, for most people, that's gonna be good enough. Do you see how cheap and easy that was? That's two parts. And then from there, you can just shove in whatever hose you want. And then you can build your whole bubble box, which we'll do shortly. And if you prefer, you can just use the picnic tap like that. I mean, it's pretty solid. So with this tap, it's no problem at all. And of course, it doesn't matter if you want to use the yellow or the red, but uh, no glue, no clamps, no nothing. Just shove it down, pop it on. Now the holes I drilled were originally meant for that post. But as you can see right here, that's actually flush. So you only need to drill a hole that size. Uh, we'll just kind of go for the center as best we can. There we go. Easy as that. And will this grab? I don't, I don't think it will. I think one of, the, one of the rings grabbed. So that probably would hold water but not as secure as I would want. This one is definitely, it clicked into place. So having that hole for the tip to slip in. <laughs> so it probably would work. You can try it yourself if you feel like it, but I got another idea. Whew, these lights are really heating it up in here. I'd say it's about 36 degrees in this garage right now. So now most coolers are gonna have two walls. So here's my thought. If we used a hole saw and just removed the top layer. <laughs> it's funny on this cooler, there's actually a circle there already that I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically showing us where to cut. <laughs> All right, I got it. It's like they didn't put insulation at that one spot just so we could do this. Now I have a feeling I'm gonna have to trim this a little bit. There's no way I'm gonna get it right the first time. But you wanna have it tight, so. Oh, it's so close. I think what it needs is maybe a little rubber mallet encouragement. It's so close. It's only plastic. So if I break it, you'll know not to do this. <laughs> There we go, look at that, we're great. It really did, got right in there. So from this point on, you got basically three options. You can do a coupling, sticking with the three millimeter inner diameter. You can do a little three millimeter elbow. 
we could just take this here now and it goes on beautifully. And now it's a lot easier to get off. <laughs> I mean, it only sticks off just the smallest little bit. Yep. <laughs> it's got but that much space between. So if you did it this way, you actually have a flush top so you could stack other things on top of this when you're camping, which could be useful to some people. And of course, with something like this, you're gonna wanna keep them lubed up. A little bit of keg lube there and to get, keep the dirt off or whatever, just use one of the little rubber nubbies. Slide that on there and it's good to go. Another good thing about this tiny little quarter inch hole is if you ever decide you didn't want these things sticking off your cooler, you could cover it up with a little bit of electrical tape and you wouldn't even notice it was ever there. <laughs> so that's about it for the installation of the, uh, the actual disconnects. Because once you get to this point, it's all just duo type fittings and hoses, which is snap it on and go. All right, now let's do the same thing to our Yeti here. Ah, somewhere around. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not drilling a hole through a Yeti, but check this out. See this little drain, which I'm pretty sure is on all of them. Standard, industry standard Yeti drain hole. Guess what else you can shove in that hole? It's perfect. It's like they did it on purpose. And inside, there's even a little groove underneath there for the water to drain out. And it gives you exactly enough room to attach the collar. Put the spring loaded tap on there. And it doesn't even touch the ground. Look at it, you got a clearance. And then of course you could attach either one of these, the five eights, uh, straight into the duotite or quick disconnect. Quick disconnect might be handy. Just like that. And then whatever you can fit in this. This particular one is pretty small. Um, I won't take a five liter. At first I didn't think this was gonna work because as you can see, but then I remembered that these ones, I think this is like the no-name brand. It's just a little bit shorter. So let's, let's see how these do. I like making these videos in real time. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Hopefully it's more exciting for you. It's more exciting for me. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You see what I'm doing there? Look at that. So I built a little daisy chain here. Gas pushes in here, pushes the liquid over to here through the gas, comes out, and then it'll come out of the tap down here. So then we can pressurize this. Lots of room for ice or some of these little cryo gel packs that we sell. Reusable and you don't get anything wet. There we go. And this is the first time I've ever made this. I had no idea if it would work or not. <laughs> but there you go. Four liters of your home brew or maybe some custom cocktails in your Yeti. Not bad. Next up, we got one of these igloo coolers. Well, that won't work that way. So in this particular cooler, it looks like you could get three. You could daisy chase them the same way. Uh, let's see, can you get a... Mmm, I don't think you'd be able to get a soda stream. Not with the regulator on top. But yeah, you could use something like that. We have all the adapters for that. You got these little cups right here. And yeah, that would be perfect. And just attach onto there. Here's a little cloth one. <laughs> so check this out. I mean, you could get the regulator on there. You could snap onto the top there. So there's 10 liters in a little... Cheap cloth Coleman cooler. Comes with a strap. <laughs> That's not too bad. I forget what a keg is full. Okay, I just filled this one right up to the top. 14.5 pounds, 6.5 kilograms. <laughs> wow. There's one, two, three, five. <laughs> I'm just pushing it. <laughs> There you go, what did I get in there? 12 liters of beverages. Or realistically, you could do 10 with pop bottles and you'd have lots of room for your CO2. Or maybe a bit of ice, it would be nice. <laughs> I'm not here to show you how to make something specific. I just grabbed the stuff that I had lying around and I thought in front of the camera, in real time, I would just play around and see what we came up with. We'll go smaller. So what I do with this is that inside there, a little nut 
to screw this in. And so what I did is I took a hacksaw to it so that it was as flush as possible, but still held this in place just to get it out of the way. Now, if you're doing a pop bottle, you don't have to worry about that at all. It won't, it won't interfere. Um, and you got lots of room for ice there. So yeah, that was just me drilling that out like that. But yeah, you can just put the pop bottle in there, screw it down, screw on your T, and then snap on your CO2. <laughs> or if you want it, I, the original reason I did this, the five liter Bubba's, because look at this, it fits. And that last little bit, it pushes up against there. There we go. It says flush. And there you go. We've created another Bubba box. You snap your gas on the side. You can hear pressurizing. We'll do the Nuka tap on this one. And we should be able to get a pour out of this. No problemo. So there's another option. Here we got another big boy. Heat glue this time. So something like this, we could easily put in, you could put the soda stream across the side there. You could put a pop bottle in there with it. Maybe even two. <laughs> so what do you think about that? So we got 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 liters of home brew. All could be different cocktails. So there you go, they give you little targets. So you could drill through there, no problem at all. Put that on there and then just snap on your nice and flush on this one. It is 30 degrees in here. I've decided to steal one of my son's little rocket pops. Take a break. Anyway, I tied it up a little bit just so I can start to actually build this thing for you. Uh, here's one configuration that I came up with. We got two five liter kegs in here and one, two, three, four pop bottles and the soda stream. Uh, I did notice that these shorter ones seem to be able to stand straight up. Will it fit with a cap on it though? Oh, it's gonna be close. Ho oh, ho ho! Maybe I shouldn't be eating in front of the camera. I mean, I'm no Brad Pitt. Oh well. So as you can see here, with the five liters, you got lots of room for ice and you could even put some food in there. <laughs> this is the main configuration I thought of originally, but uh, see how many pop bottles we could fit in here. <sighs> now I just got this cooler off Amazon. I think it was $70. It's probably made for this purpose to hold pop bottles this way. What if we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 20 liters. And you could fit the uh, soda stream along the side. Ice would go in between there. It'd be a heck of a daisy chain. Like I said, this is up to you. I'm just trying to give you some ideas show you the parts to use and how you can make whatever the heck you want to make. So if you wanted to build this, you would start with just your pop tap kit, which would give you this, this, and that. You would just get an additional pop tea kit for every other pop bottle that you want to add to the system. You could use the same regulator and the same tap on top like that. I would recommend when using this out in the sun though, to put some kind of foam rubber over this to insulate it. This is the kind of thing that I would recommend. It's kind of a, I don't even know what it's made, a neoprene or something. If you had four feet of something like this, I tried to source it out. If anyone can help, leave a comment. I, I wanted to find it so it was a little bit thinner, snugger, and uh, you know, red or something. So it had a flashy color like can cake, right? So then to stop using the small cartridges like this, you'd want the SodaStream conversion kit to use the soda stream adapter. So there we go. If you want to start your adventure of making your own bubble boxes, you can do it as cheap as getting the pop tap kit, getting the soda stream conversion kit, and then you just need to buy one of these and one of these, whatever color you prefer. And like I just showed you, drill the hole, shove this on, and there we go. Yeah, so then you would have your pop bottle, and that's it. But you only got one bottle. So then just get as many pop tea kits as you want bottles. Easy as that. Now, as far as hooking all this up, let's try three to three separate taps. So I'm gonna need a T, and this is why I can't really put kits together. I tried that originally, but I don't know what people wanna build. Build whatever you wanna build, <laughs> right? So all of a sudden there I've got three. So there we go, one, two. You're probably wondering why there's two different types of gas fittings. The reason I still use these in the kits 
is because then you can easily screw it directly into the regulator to go back into portable mode. As opposed to these, there's not really a good way to attach this directly to the regulator. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, and so then you could just go into here, go into here, and into there. So there we got our manifold. You could put valves in line if you wanted to. And then you just snap this onto your, onto your gas. If you're ever having trouble snapping on, like I just did, don't forget this little lube sample that comes in all our kits. That little tiny dab right there on here. Let's go fix our problem, watch this. Slides right on there now. <laughs> I put that one backwards. It doesn't matter, by the way. I just usually put yellow on top because yellow is beer, right? But it doesn't matter. So we'll leave it the way it is. So there we go. We got our soda stream bottle. Pushing gas through all those. We'll pressurize everything. Did I tighten everything? Yes, 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 I did. And like I say, <laughs> you could probably just leave it like that. Put these whatever way on your, over your ice, over your food. So now we got to put in our liquid lines. So do you want to know the exact length and the exact diameter that you need? I don't know. It depends on what you're serving and it depends on what temperature what you're serving is. And it also depends what the carbonation level of what you're serving is. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. Okay, I had to put on a fan. Hopefully it's not going to be picked up by the mic and ruin everything, but I am moist. Okay, so line lengths. Here we got the four millimeter hose. Here we got five millimeter hose. Now, if you're pouring something that's not carbonated, like say lemonade for the kids, um, you can use the shortest length of five millimeter and shoot it right out of there. Generally, my feeling in a box like this, the three millimeter. The reason I like it is because it's more flexible. And so I would just go right in with that for a beer, for instance. Anyhow, so you could go with that, like that to something like lemonade. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There. <laughs> so this time we'll put the hose in here first and then onto the bottle. And then you arrange this so that it's all pretty. Like that. But it really doesn't matter. You can make it look good if you want, but I mean, let's face it. Uh, so then, yeah. And then we could test it. And there's that pouring nicely. So a little slow for my liking, but then here, let's open up our flow restrictor. Still a little bit slow for me, depending on what I'm pouring, right? So what was that? That was the uh, five millimeter, but we've got about, you know, four feet of it there. And then another four feet on the picnic hose. And uh, let's just snip it super short. All right, right there. That might be not enough to close the cooler properly. So there's that factor too. You want to be able to open the cooler. And what's our PSI? So uh, yeah, it's set to five. So I'll crank that up to say 10. Well, let's go to 12. So I think that's pretty good there now. If I was serving maybe seltzers, something non-carbonated. And we can do the same thing with the, with the other taps. See, that would be too fast for beer. So this one has a three millimeter. Let's compare the difference. Let's see, there you go. A lot more casual flow. So my guess for the beer using this new system, personally, I would use the three millimeter and probably about eight feet. And if it's still too slow, I'd cut that down. You can also use the flow control on the tap itself. So there you go. You can hear that. That's the check valve and just the sound of the bottles. Um, so I'm kind of doing this all willy nilly just so you can see that you really can't mess this up. I mean, I'm just snap, 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 off you go. You can make it pretty, strap it to the side. Um, it depends on how you want to arrange your food in here. How many bottles you want to put in, I don't know. And another thing occurred to me is that you could actually take another one of these and put it on the other side if you want it. I mean, depending on what you got going on there, I mean, it's an easier way to be able to click on and off of there real simple. Now, this time I wanted to show you the daisy chain. You just snap your gas onto the first bottle. So your gas would come in, put pressure through the dip tube up, then come in to the gas. 
it'll dribble down the side and then come back up through the dip tube, over the top, into the gas, up to the top, and then finally through the last dip tube, out to the faucet of whatever you use. Now, as you notice here, I've got yellow and red, mix match, yellow and red mix match, because it doesn't matter. You can put these on any way you want. On the normal corny kegs and on the mega caps, you have to put gas on gas, liquid on liquid, or else it'll get stuck. But these ones, it doesn't matter. Give it a little bit of pressure. They're all filling into each other. I should have made this hose longer. <laughs> oh, oh well. And it'll come out of this tap here. And then you just pile a bunch of ice on top of it. Forget about it. And then just keep pouring throughout the day. And because the dip tubes are floppy, they'll just go down to the bottom. You know, and if one pop bottle has a little bit left in it, just take the top off and drink it. <laughs> You'll get most of it. And there you have it. I think that's pretty well all the configurations with uh, pop bottles. Let's do one with the Bubba kegs now. So if you were to go a little higher end with your Bubba box and start with five liter mini kegs, you could start with a pro tap kit, which would give you the mega cap, the nice tap to snap on here or up here with the flow control. And you would use your same regulator the same way we did with the pop tap kit. Just get the old soda stream conversion kit. So you got this setup instead. If you started off with the fridge tap kit, you would already have the soda stream conversion kit. So then you would be using this tap on top of your bubble box. Then for every extra keg, you need a mega cap kit. So you can have caps on each one of them. This is the one I'm gonna bring out to the cabin this weekend. I think I'm gonna serve Caesars, margaritas, and beer, and lemonade. I don't know, I've made up my mind. Okay, so now I wanna go back to my manifold. I got one, two, three. Use my original disconnect. And now because we're using actual corny keg fittings, we need to make sure we're using actual gas fittings. Yellow for beer. Gray for gas. I think for this one, I'm gonna get some actual beer. Okay. That one there, that one there. There we go. We'll set our CO2 to um, about 10. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, I think. So we sell the hose in these uh, 12 meter bags. It's like 40 feet. And it's pretty cheap. It's way cheaper to buy it by the, the full bag than the, uh, by the foot. And then you can just screw around and do whatever you want. Of course, it's better to start too long and cut it shorter. But um, you know how they say you can't take away salt. You can add more hose, you just put a coupling on it and attach the two pieces. So I can take a guess. I'm gonna say that that's too much and our beer's gonna pour too slow. It's about eight feet, give or take. And we'll go on to our beer. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be too much hose. Now, if you wanna be super careful, a little bit of star sand. But let's face it, you don't have to worry about oxidizing five liters of beer that you're gonna drink that night. Oh, that is cold. We got actual beer in here now. Beer doesn't like to be warm. We want to keep this this line. This line is super warm now. Super duper warm. There, isn't that nice? And then we can just snap this right on here. Then we can put our little ice pack directly over it. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, we're gonna try uh, about eight feet of hose, three millimeter. Okay. A little bit slow. Yeah, it's a little bit too slow for me. Is that all the way open? Yeah. So, I mean, so what are we gonna do? Let's, let's take this off here. I'm gonna go aggressive here. By the way that was pouring, I'm gonna cut that basically in half. So, uh, I would say four, but it is three millimeter. All right, now that we've purged the line, let's see what we get. faster. I think it's about right. I think we could even go shorter. I'm surprised. That three millimeter really restricts it. I just got it in, so I'm, I'm kind of trying it for the first time here. I just keep pouring the beer. I can stop at a certain point. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that pour. 
nice and cold, nice and bubbly. Um, so anyway, it all depends how bubbly your beer is to start with. What you're trying to serve, if you're trying to serve Prosecco, you're gonna have to crank that right up, probably longer lengths. But it just takes a little bit of dialing it in. It's, uh, it's not that complicated. So get out there this summer, and make a Bubba box of your own, and uh, send me the pictures. I'll, uh, I'll do a raffle or something. We'll put them up on Instagram, and then I'll do a random draw, send someone a keg or a kid or something. I haven't figured it out yet. Anyway, it's after six, so I'm gonna keep drinking this the rest of the night and see how it goes. <laughs> Cheers.